Ahoy hoy, I'm Planet Walk, and today we are on to pseudoscientist number 5, a flat earther who is definitely fake as one of the other videos proved. I am of course referring to Mitchell from Australia. Now interestingly, Mitchell hasn't really been posting a lot of videos this year. In the past 6 months he's only posted 4 videos, two of which were sections from Nathan Oakley's show, and I'm not going to respond to them because I'm done responding to Nathan Oakley. So let's take a look at a video where he claims that Foucault's pendulum proves that the Earth is stationary. We are here today at Science Space to observe this Foucault pendulum. The GLOBE model claims that this device can be used to demonstrate the Coriolis effect, and therefore prove that Earth is rotating. So as always, flat earthers are misunderstanding proof because you do not prove things in science. You try to collect evidence for something in science, or evidence against it. But yes, Foucault's pendulum is a demonstration of the Coriolis effect in action. Let's explore what the globe claim actually is. What is happening? As the pendulum swings back and forth, the Earth is rotating. An astronaut in space watching a pendulum at the North Pole would see the direction of the pendulum remain the same, but the Earth would turn below it once every day. We are standing on the rotating Earth, therefore we see the pendulum change direction. We are not at the North Pole, so our pendulum takes more than one day to complete a full rotation. A pendulum actually rotates slower the closer you move to the equator. At the equator itself, it doesn't rotate at all. The diagram in the bottom left represents what the globe claims a pendulum will do at the North Pole, in Paris, and at the equator. So yes, that is a very basic description of Foucault's pendulum explaining what it does. It is an experiment that has been replicated many times to varying levels of success. I know someone who actually failed to replicate it because they got too much drift. It's probably not a good idea to attempt to replicate it outside because Wind is a thing that does exist. But anyway, the reason why Foucault's pendulum works is simply because of inertia. As we all know, if something is in motion, let's say this little circle for example, well it wants to continue moving in the same direction. Now Newton's first law of motion states that if an object is in motion, then it will stay in motion unless acted upon by an outside force. So unless a force acts on this little circle here, then it's going to continue moving in the same direction, even if this larger circle is rotating. Now if you are standing on this larger circle and moving with it, well then from your perspective, this smaller circle would take a path that would look something like this. Now this is completely amazing to you because you remember the first law of motion and this has just changed its direction without any forces acting on it. But then you remember that you are in a rotating reference frame and if you account for that, well then the small circle just went in a straight line. Now the principle behind Foucault's pendulum is essentially the same. To us it looks as though Foucault's pendulum is moving, but instead we are the ones that are actually moving. Now the reason why Foucault's pendulum doesn't work at the equator is because your orientation relative to the motion of the earth is different at the equator than at the poles. And this means that the axis on which the pendulum swings is moving along with the rotation of the earth. And a result of this is that as you change your latitude, then Foucault's pendulum will drift by different amounts. Now I hope that explanation makes sense, I was trying to explain that in my own words, rather than just reading off what the display cabinet says. This is the starting position of the pendulum. The globe predicts it will process counterclockwise 8.5 degrees after one hour, knocking over the dominoes with the blue X's, 17 degrees after two hours, knocking over a further two dominoes in purple, 25.5 degrees after three hours, taking out another two dominoes in green, and 34 degrees after four hours. Beginning the observation at 9.11 a.m., this is the starting position of the pendulum. At 10.11 a.m., this is what we observe in the pendulum. The globe predicted that the pendulum should have deviated 8.5 degrees in that first hour, but it is still on the same starting position. Uh oh, this could be bad. Did NASA forget to activate the Coriolis Force simulation in Sydney? At 11.33am... Hey Mitchell, just a little bit of a tip. If you want to be taken seriously by other flat earthers and not be called a shill, best not to use the number 33. 
we see the pendulum still in the starting position. Oh dear, this is not going well. Am I going to have to become an idiot? I mean, a flat earther after this. 10 past 12 p.m. And the pendulum is still in the starting position. And finally, at 1.16 p.m., the pendulum is still yet to show any sign of deviation. Oh dear, are we going to have to get rid of the past 400 years of knowledge and return to a geostationary Earth model now? Well, I guess it's over now. I might have to go hand in my NASA shill resignation and... Hold on, one second. That's not the only Foucault's pendulum in the world, right? As luck would have it, this is a Foucault pendulum in Orange Coast, California, and it appears to be rotating there. So what is the conclusion that we can draw from this observation? Well, the conclusion that I would draw is that you cherry-picked an example of a Foucault pendulum that doesn't work and ignored all the ones that do. Let's formulate a modus tollens valid logical argument. If P, then Q. Not Q, therefore not P. The modus tollens argument will be as follows. If the earth we're standing on is rotating, then we will see the pendulum change direction. From the observations of the pendulum for four hours without any deviation, we can then conclude we don't see the pendulum change direction. Therefore, Earth is not rotating. Okay, so every time a flat earther tries to use modus tollens, they forget that there are hidden assumptions there. A hidden assumption there might be that Mitchell is not lying. Another hidden assumption is that there are no forces that might be causing the pendulum to align with the rotation of the Earth. Now, Foucault's pendulum is a very finicky experiment. It's actually quite hard to get right because if you've got something like, let's say, wind, it could mess things up. So the next time someone claims that the Foucault pendulum proves that Earth is rotating, point them to this video and just let them know the Foucault pendulum proves Earth is stationary. Well, no, it doesn't prove that the Earth is stationary because that is just one of them. There are others that show that the Earth is rotating. Now, some people might be saying, well, what if he's lying about this? That is certainly a possibility because he only showed little clips. He didn't show a full recording for four hours of him watching this thing. Now, Mr. Sensible decided to say, hey, look, Mitchell, record it for four hours and then post it to YouTube. Now, we did not get a four hour recording, but we did get this video that has comments turned off for some reason. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Welcome to Flat Earth School. Hey Mitchell, I know you're working on your CC impression, but we've already had CC in the series and we don't really need another one. Also, your impression does need a bit of work. I'm Mitchell from Australia, and I'm back here live at Science Space in Wollongong, the home of the Earth rotation debunking Foucault pendulum. I will say that it's very interesting how you say the instead of a. The implies there's only one of them. I've been requested to come back here by Mr. Sensible to take a four hour video of this earth rotation debunking Foucault pendulum. Now I've been called a liar, I've been, uh, I've, people have said that the pendulum absolutely does show the rotation of the earth, that I just edited things together, that the Foucault pendulum absolutely will work. Well, my claim is that the Foucault pendulum inside this building here does not show the rotation of the earth. I do appreciate how honest he's being. He's saying that the Foucault pendulum in that building, not any Foucault pendulum, but the Foucault pendulum in that building does not show the rotation of the earth. Which means that there could be Foucault pendulums out there that do show the rotation of the earth, like, you know, the one in Orange Coast. Now, much to my surprise, I didn't even have to wait four hours to prove my claim. The museum had already proven it for me. After being absolutely inundated by people's phone calls and emails asking why their Foucault pendulum does not work, the museum had no other choice but to go into damage control and close the exhibition, fully confirming my claim that this Foucault pendulum did not demonstrate the rotation of the Earth. Okay, so Mitchell wasn't lying about what he saw in that first video. Good to see. You've used up all your excuses trying to dance around the issue. Now it's time to address the fact that there is no observable or measurable Earth rotation. Except, you know, there are working Foucault's pendulums, like the one in Orange Coast, but here's the thing, you don't actually have to go to Orange Coast to see one. There is one in Sydney. You see, that video was four months ago, 
And they didn't say that they were permanently shutting down that exhibit, did they? No, the sign there says that there was a fault, and that fault is being repaired, and that it will demonstrate the rotation of the Earth shortly. Now, it shouldn't be too hard to contact them, see if they've fixed it, and if they have, go there to see what it's doing now. It would actually be quite fun to see what kind of excuses Mitchell comes up with if he sees it working. But honestly, I kind of doubt that Mitchell is going to go back there, because it's easy to say, you know, I'm right, I did one thing to prove it, and therefore I don't need to go back anymore. I would love if Mitchell were to prove me wrong on that, but I'm not going to hold my breath. But I do wonder if there are any exhibits like that in New Zealand. If you do know of any, let me know, and I might actually pay a visit to one of them. But anyway, that is it for today. Leave a like and subscribe if you like this video. Join us tomorrow when we're going to cover someone who believes that they're the only person in the world who actually does science. As always, a big shout out to my $20 or more patrons, Hugh Jars, MC Nutkin, Shaggy, Jet Alone, Nathaniel Muller, Vermont1777, Wolfie Mori, Grandma Ghost, Kid Vicious, Sarcher Campbell, Kitten McKin from Kitten Town, Craig D'Amelio, Nerthan Termson, and Richard M. Chapman. If you want to support me financially, you can do so on Patreon. There should be a link there. But anyway, I will see you in the next video. Between you and me, thank you for watching.